Hello, Matt here from chemistrystudent.com. In this video, we're going to look at proteins. We're going to talk about what proteins are, their primary, secondary, and tertiary structures, and how they are formed by condensation polymerization of amino acids. Amino acids have been covered in a separate video. Check the links in the description below. Before we talk in detail about proteins, there are a few essential ideas you need to be comfortable with. Amino acids are a group of compounds that all have the same general structure, with an amine and carboxylic acid group at each end of the chain. There are naturally occurring amino acids, each with a different R group bonded to the central alpha carbon atom. A condensation reaction describes the joining of two molecules together to form a larger molecule, with the release of a small molecule, usually water. Polymerization describes the process in which lots of small molecules called monomers join together to form a long chain molecule with a repeating structure made up of repeating units. Intermolecular forces are forces of attraction that can arise between molecules or between areas within large molecules. Hydrogen bonding is a specific type of intermolecular force that can arise between and within molecules that contain OH, NH, or FH covalent bonds. Recap done, let's go. Amino acids are the building blocks of life. They are used by living organisms to produce hundreds of thousands of different compounds. This is all because amino acids have an amine group and a carboxylic acid group enabling them to bond to other amino acids in condensation reactions. The amine group of one amino acid can react with the carboxylic acid group from another amino acid, forming what is called a peptide link. A water molecule is released in the process, coming from the OH in the carboxylic acid and a hydrogen from the NH2 amine group. This makes the forming of a peptide link a condensation reaction. If two amino acids join together in this way, a dipeptide molecule is formed. However, the amazing thing about amino acids is that they can just keep joining together over and over again. If more than two amino acids join together, a polypeptide is formed, and the reaction is described as polymerization, with the amino acids acting as monomers. Polypeptides can be absolutely enormous, often being made up of thousands of amino acids all joined together in one long chain. The peptide links between amino acids can be broken apart in hydrolysis reactions, the exact opposite of condensation reactions that form them. This can be achieved by heating a polypeptide in aqueous acid. For example, if a dipeptide is heated with dilute acid, the peptide link splits apart and the carboxylic acid group of one amino acid is reformed and the amine group of the other regains a hydrogen to become NH2 again. Due to the acidic conditions, the amine NH2 groups will actually accept a H plus ion and form NH3 plus ions. Once a polypeptide has been broken down, the mixture formed can be analysed using thin layer chromatography to identify the amino acids present that must have made up the protein. As amino acids are organic compounds that are colourless, UV light or a locating agent must be used to see where the amino acids are on the chromatogram. From this, RF values can be used to confirm the presence of a particular amino acid. Chromatography has been covered in more detail at chemistrystudent.com. Check the links in the description below. Polypeptides can also be broken down using protease enzymes. Enzymes are protein-based substances made by living organisms that can act as biological catalysts, and they provide alternative reaction pathways, dramatically reducing the activation energy needed and making a reaction much faster. Peptide links are vital in nature as they allow living organisms to construct very large molecules called proteins using amino acids. 
Now, proteins are essential for life, and there isn't anywhere near enough time in this video to outline their roles in nature. But suffice to say, without them, pretty much every biological process in your body couldn't happen, and pretty much every tissue and fibre in your body is constructed using them. Pretty important then. <laughs> there are thousands and thousands of different proteins found in nature, all made from the same start in 22 amino acids. The wide range of possible proteins comes from the fact that all 22 amino acids can be joined together in a virtually infinite number of possible sequences, given very different proteins with different shapes. Now, the shape of a protein is really important, as it determines its exact function and role within an organism. To help try and understand these complicated shapes, we break them down into three levels. Primary structure, secondary structure, and tertiary structure. Biologists also even consider a quaternary structure for proteins that are made up of more than one polypeptide chain. The primary structure is determined by the sequence of amino acids bonded together within the protein. The secondary structure is determined by hydrogen bonding that can form between NH and CWO bonds from different peptide links, as a chain of amino acids, the primary structure of the protein, starts to fold, a bit like a piece of string collapsing back on itself. Hydrogens with a partial positive charge from the NH bond form hydrogen bond attractions to the partially negative oxygen, with a lone pair of electrons, from a C double O bond from a different peptide link. These hydrogen bonds can form in repeating patterns, making the chain of amino acids fold or twist in two possible ways, described as alpha helices and beta pleated sheets. Alpha helices are formed when NH and C double O groups form hydrogen bonds in such a way that the amino acid chain coils itself into a spiral. Beta pleated sheets are formed when NH and C double O groups form hydrogen bonds between layers of folded amino acid chains, forming regular strands that run against each other, creating flat sheets. The tertiary structure of a protein is determined by R groups from amino acids interacting with each other. As the secondary structure of a protein causes the chain of amino acids to fold and bend in on itself, R groups from different amino acids in the chain get close enough together to experience forces between one another. This can further cause the polypeptide chain to twist and fold in on itself. R groups have different structures, and only R groups that share similar chemical properties can experience attraction to each other. R groups with different properties can even repel each other. The types of forces that form between R groups depend entirely on the R group specific structure, and these can include intermolecular forces, such as hydrogen bonding and van der Waals interactions, ionic attraction, and disulfide bridges, where two sulfur atoms from different R groups can bond together. As only certain R groups experience attraction to each other, the exact folding that occurs in the tertiary structure of a protein is based on the positions and orientations of R groups, meaning the primary and secondary structure will ultimately determine the tertiary structure that arises. Changes in temperature and pH conditions can affect the tertiary structure of a protein, as the bond in between R groups is quite easily altered. This can change the structure and shape of the protein ever so slightly, meaning it no longer functions as it should. This is referred to as denaturing, and to prevent it from occurring, living organisms have to maintain near constant internal conditions. So, to summarise, proteins are formed by polypeptides which are formed from the condensation polymerization of amino acids. An amine group in one amino acid can form a peptide link with a carboxylic acid from another amino acid in a condensation reaction, and a molecule of water gets released. Polypeptides can be broken down into amino acids in acid hydrolysis where the polypeptide is heated with aqueous acid. 
In nature, this process is achieved using enzymes. Once hydrolyzed, the mixture formed can be analyzed using thin layer chromatography to identify the amino acids present in the protein based on their RF values. Proteins have complicated three-dimensional shapes and their structure is broken down into three levels, primary, secondary and tertiary. The primary structure is described as being the sequence of amino acids bonded together in the polypeptide chain. The secondary structure is the formation of alpha helices or beta pleated sheets by the forming of hydrogen bonds between NH and CO bonds from different peptide links. The tertiary structure is described as the formation of attraction forces between R groups on different amino acids from different parts of the polypeptide chain, causing the chain to further fold and remain folded. These forces can be intermolecular between nonpolar R groups, permanent dipole dipole for polar R groups, hydrogen bonding, ionic attraction, and disulfide bridges between R groups that contain sulfur. I hope you found this video useful. Please check out other relevant videos in the links given in the description below and visit chemistrystudent.com for free notes and revision materials.